Making money with 3D is one of the hardest things to do. It's difficult and no one really talks about it. But if you can get these five things right, you'll become an expert with freelance, earn a great living, and be able to do what you want, when you want. So in this video, I'm gonna take my eight plus years of experience and condense that down to a five-step framework. Something I would use if I was starting completely from scratch with freelance today. This is the blueprint to starting off right if you have no experience with freelance and having a concise game plan like this would have saved me loads of time in the beginning. So let's break this down one at a time. If you're just starting with freelance, it can feel extremely overwhelming. There's a million and one things to learn with no specific place to learn from. Kind of like your first day in Minecraft. Hear me out. When I started with Minecraft, it looked like this. There was no playbook on what to do, where to go, or how to do it. I'm not kidding. You put this into Google, nothing there. It was basically like a free for all sandbox and you were kind of just happy to be there. <laughs> With freelance, it's pretty much the same. If I'm starting from scratch, I don't know what to do. There's no clear pathway to success and finding a proper guide online is like a needle in a haystack. That's why I built out the SMEF framework. Each level represents a crucial step in the freelance journey, and the very first level is potentially the most important, because getting this right could be the difference between earning 10 bucks and 10,000 bucks. So, what is it? The first level is specialize. Starting out, we don't wanna be a wandering generality. We wanna be a meaningful specific. For example, when you watch videos from your favorite creators on YouTube, you kind of already know what you're in for. There's a specific ethos for the channel, and the content topic is mostly the same. Mostly. Now, we want to do this for ourselves with 3D, or in other words, find a niche. And I know you're saying, Smeef, this is great, but how do I do that? Well, it's actually really easy. And bringing this back to Minecraft for a second, the first thing you usually do in a new world is find the perfect biome to build your base. Unless you're a psychopath going for the world record any percent. <laughs> so in order to find the niche, we first need to explore. And I like to use the dig method. Step one is determine. And all you wanna do is reflect on three things. What are you good at, interested in, and passionate about? I'll go first. I'm good at animation, I'm interested in products, and I'm passionate about energy drinks. Yeah, I, I have a serious step two, investigate. This is all about research and finding proof that your niche actually works. If your whole thing is, I make 3D tacos for traditional Mexican food trucks serving locally in Brisbane CBD, might be a bit too specific. Instead, you could try something like, I make hyper real food renders for established brands. Now we're cooking. Step three, go. You've done the research, your niche has a solid place in the market. Now you're ready to get this thing going. And since this video is what I would do, product rendering or product animation would be my niche. The pay is amazing. It's easy to learn and there's loads of clients looking for these services. So finding an aspect of 3D and slowly dominating it will make you a force to be reckoned with. But this means nothing if you don't have anything to show for it. So how do we fix that? Becoming a master of a niche is not something that's gonna happen overnight, let alone your lifetime. So this is the stage to get your reps in and build an online presence. Now, the easiest way to do this is to just set a goal and stick to it. For example, if this was me, I'd be committing myself to one project per week, per month. That sets a simple cadence for me to follow. It's more than enough time to get something decent done and within three months, that's already 12 great projects to put online. Again, back to Minecraft. This is like building out your base. The house may be done, but now we need to expand our surroundings. I'm talking entry-level mob farms, beacons, and of course, jail cells. I mean, trading halls for your villages. In all seriousness, I know everyone has insecurities about doing this. 
It's natural, but breaking this insecurity will not only 10x your quality of work, it'll also build your audience and attract clients. Don't worry, we'll get to that. Honestly, if you're really struggling to do this and are afraid of what other people might think, I can guarantee you no one's gonna judge your work more than yourself. And hey, if it really helps, just leave your stuff in the comments below. I read every comment. Every comment. Level three, establish. This is where we need to hone our work down to the best pieces we have and start building our brand image. You can think of this as decorating your base in Minecraft. We wanna take this from a day one build to a day 100 build. Essentially sprucing up the place, adding our best resources to the builds and making it look good, really good. This is also known as your portfolio. Now, remember, at this stage, we've got a decent catalog of work, but it doesn't scream, hire me. So to get there, we need to do a few things. And really, there's only three steps to making a killer portfolio. Step one is select. We wanna choose three to five of our best pieces and set them aside for our portfolio. That's it. Step two, build. Now I'd wanna create at least two flagship projects, something that blows my previous work out of the water and shows my skill set to the best degree possible. For the timeline on this, I'd give myself two months. These are gonna front run my portfolio and be the first thing a client sees. So there's no room for shortcuts. Step three, showcase. I've got my amazing work, but now I need to show it. Honestly, there's no right or wrong way to do this. I'd recommend just making a simple website with Squarespace or even something like Behance. You don't need to overthink this part. The main goal here is to just create a concise and enjoyable viewing experience. If I sent my potential client something like this, you already know they're gonna close that tab, block me and get a restraining order. Whereas if I sent them something like this, now, there's still two more levels to the Spief framework, and pulling this next one off right is the key to getting bigger and better clients. Seriously, I wish someone told me about this concept sooner. So, what is it? All right, level four, advance. At this stage, we've got the absolute basics done. Life is good, but it can be better. Now I'd want to start leveling up and getting better, more sophisticated armor sets in Minecraft. Look, I, I have an addiction. My base looks sick, but my character, I don't want to settle for wooden tools and leather armor. I want that netherite set, but to get there, you have to grind, like really grind. Don't even get me started on beacons. Oh, wait. That's one. The point I'm trying to make here is level four is all about upgrading your character, or in this case, you. This is the concept of skill stacking. I love talking about this because it's like a cheat code that anyone can apply. And once you understand how it works, it's a game changer. Let me give you an example. Two freelancers are going after the same job. It's a tech startup looking to visualize their product. Freelancer one has a singular skill stack. They're amazing at 3D modeling. That's it. <laughs> Whereas freelancer two, they can do modeling, texturing, animation, coding, lighting, compositing, sound design. Oh, you see what I'm getting at here? Not only can this guy do the job, but he can also solve all these other problems in a comprehensive package, which by the way, lets you charge more. Having this kind of versatility in your tool belt is invaluable. It's like having a fully enchanted armor set and the other guy has feather flying. <laughs> and hey, if you're stuck with how to start this whole skill stack thing, Derek Elliott, who's an industry pro, just released a bunch of classes on Skillshare, who's also sponsoring this video. You probably know Skillshare for their classes in photography and cooking, but I bet you didn't know they have hundreds of career-focused classes as well. And at the theme of skill stacking, this is amazing. There's classes on freelancing, graphic design, but most importantly, Blender. I highly recommend any of Derek's classes, but if I had to choose, it'd be the advanced 3D animation. This is honestly incredible. 
It takes you through everything you need to know. And by the end of it, you'll have a killer piece for your portfolio. I've used Skillshare for years, and it's truly a fantastic way to build your skills deck. If you want to try it out, well, Skillshare has hooked me up with an amazing offer for you. The first 1,000 people to use the link below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Using that link seriously helps support the channel and it lets me do this whole YouTube thing for free for you. Click that link and thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Level five, find. Finding clients is one of those magical mysteries that apparently everyone and their dog wants to know about. Seriously, you guys, you got problems. <laughs> So there's a few ways to do this, and I've had success with all of these approaches, but I wanna focus on one method which is broken, and it all starts with villages. I promise this will make sense. When you trade with a villager, your goal is to get emeralds. This is their currency, and it lets you buy stuff. Some trades are better than others, but ultimately, nothing here is amazing. Even if you find a trade that seems good, it quickly falls apart and you're back to square one. These types of trades are similar to another marketplace I know, which I think we've all tried at least once. Fiverr. The way these marketplaces are set up kind of put you in a lose-lose position. It's generally low value work from low value clients. And at the end of the day, there's thousands of people on here betting against you. So it's quite literally a race to the bottom. Are you seeing the similarities yet? So if this is the problem, what's the solution? Villages, specifically zombie villages. Please hear me out. When you find these guys in the wild, they're on the attack. They don't know you and you don't know them, but with a bit of love, golden apples and excruciating pain, they become your friend. The moment they switch into a working role, the oh, trades man. are insane. Yo, one book. Do you see what I'm getting at here? The zombie villager is your client and curing them is the solution. This is what I call the value method. It takes three steps. Here's how you do it. Step one, find. All we're doing here is finding people to contact. And luckily, if you followed level one, you should already know where to look. So this part will be easy. Step two, give. Once you find your client, we wanna give them stuff. I'm talking potions and golden apples. For example, this company sells dog bowls. It's a pretty simple design and it's right up my alley. So now I'd want to give. And this is just offering to do something for them. Kind of like a zombie villager. So go to their profile, find something relevant and use that to make a custom message. Do not skip this step. If you burst into their DMs saying, I bake 3D, give me money, <laughs> you're gonna go nowhere quick. Instead, you could use a framework like this. Introduce, question, offer, proof. It doesn't have to be complicated. And this is something you'll get better at over time. Now, if you're doing this with like three brands and saying, Smeef, this doesn't work. <laughs> the key here is to just do this at scale. I'm talking like 100 to 1000 per month. Now, listen, I know that sounds insane, but realistically, you're only going to convert 1% of these people, which at the bare minimum means one high quality client. This is literally all you need to get started. And it sets you up perfectly for step three, trade. Once they've said yes to the offer, the hard work is done. All you need to do now is over deliver and give them the golden apple. As soon as they take that from you, we now have an S tier villager to trade with, or in this case, a client. Since you've already given a ton of value, they know that you can deliver, and it makes asking for these next three things so simple. Number one is work. Straight up, this is the time to ask them for work. Whether they know it or not, we've just solved one problem in their business but now they're gonna see a bunch of new problems crop up. For example, maybe they need some product animation for vertical ads, or maybe their website has terrible stock images. <laughs> Whatever it is, you can identify the problem and pitch the solution. 
we've already got a foot in the door, so an ask like this is pretty easy to say yes to. But Smeef, what if they say no? Well, this is where we pivot to networking. I'm talking about referrals. Maybe they don't have a budget for your service right now, but odds are they know someone who does. And to ask them, you can send them a simple message like, hey, thanks for working with me. Do you know anyone else needing my services? If so, would you mind passing my info along? Thanks a bunch and looking forward to working with you in the future. This is the simplest and fastest way to increase your reach to high quality clients. Not only is it frictionless for the client to do, but it's also one of the most common ways to earn extra income with your business. Now, I know you're saying, Smeef, what if they say no to this as well? Don't worry, there's still one more thing we can ask. And this is potentially the most important. Testimonials. When you look at big brands online, they usually have a section where people can leave reviews. In our case, we want this specifically for our portfolio. To get that, all you need to do is ask for a simple review on their experience. It'll look something like this. The reason why this is so powerful is because it solidifies you as an authority in the space. You have real work from a real brand with a real review. Each time you do this, your proof of work in the industry increases and this will ultimately skyrocket your career. But Smeef, what if they say no? Look, if they're not willing to do any of these things, you probably gave them a red apple instead of a golden apple. And at this stage, I'd just kill them. In Minecraft. Now, let me be clear. I'm not an expert or master that knows everything, but the Smeef framework is something I've found success with. And it's something I know for a fact that you can too. So all of this is great, but there's still one massive problem I see a lot of beginners make when pricing their work. And to fix that, you'll want to watch this video right here.